Hello and welcome to part two in our series on modern harmony. Just a quick reminder that all the examples in this session will be in the key of E. And also if you want to check out part one in the series, there will be a link in the description below. Before we move on, let's have a quick revision of what we discussed in part one. In the key of E major, we were looking at different ways we could approach the chords that were created out of the traditional E harmonized scale. And what we discovered, if we were, say, moving from an E chord to an A chord in the key of E, traditionally we would have E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, and A. And we discovered that what we could do is replace the third chord, the G sharp minor, with an E that had a G sharp in the bass. Therefore, we could play the first four chords in the key of E major as E, F sharp minor, E with a G sharp bass, and then A. Let's continue looking at our options and alternative ways of playing the rest of the chords in the key of E. So moving on from the A chord, we would then go to B, and then traditionally we'd have a C sharp minor. Now what we can do with the C sharp minor, if it isn't quite the sound we're looking for, a good option there is to play an A with a C sharp bass. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. And again with the chord voicings I'm playing on the guitar, we're having drone strings ring over the top of the basic chord. So I'm going from A. With our drone strings. Now moving up to B, and as we said traditionally we hear C sharp minor next, what we could do is play A, B, Then A with a C sharp bass. And I'm sure you can hear that creates a different emotion. The next chord in the key of E would be D sharp diminished. Now in contemporary music, it's not very often that we hear the diminished chord being played. In fact, this next chord I'm going to uh, present is the chord that you're likely to hear as a D sharp. So instead of hearing a D sharp, the seventh chord in the harmonized scale in E, instead of hearing a diminished chord like we heard in the original harmonized scale in part one when I played the whole basic set of triads, so instead of hearing the D sharp diminished, The chord that is most often used as a substitute for the D sharp is a B chord with a D sharp bass. What I'll do now is play A, B, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished, and then the octave E chord. That's how it would normally sound. Let's have a listen to that first. So A. B, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished, and then octave E. What we now know is that we could use this next set of chords as an option. We could have the A, B, A with a C sharp bass, B with a D sharp bass, And 
finishing on A. Now it's time to review everything we've done so far and have a listen to the different set of chords. I'm going to go through now and play our new set of chords, which will be E, F sharp minor, E with the G sharp bass, A, B, A with the C sharp bass, B with the D sharp bass, and back to E. Let's have a listen to those chords. So E. F sharp minor. E with the G sharp bass. A. B. A with the C-sharp bass. B with a D-sharp bass. And back to E. Notice that all the new variations feature chords that already exist naturally in the key of E. Only in this instance, we are playing the chords with a third in the bass. The E with a G-sharp bass is simply an E major chord with the third note in the E chord, the G-sharp, in the bass. The A with a C-sharp bass is an A chord with the third note of the A chord, the C-sharp, in the bass. And the B chord with the D-sharp bass, once again, is a B major chord with the third note. D sharp in the bass. Now the main thing to keep in mind at the moment is that we're not saying that these new chords with the third in the bass replace the original set of chords. They just give us another option. It lets us create a different emotion or if you're working out a song or you're trying to find a harmony, uh, an alternative harmony, it gives you an option in sound. So you can mix and match. You can use, for example, an A B, C sharp minor, they are the traditional chords in the key of E, and then use the B with the D sharp bass before moving on to E. For example, that would sound like this, A, B, C sharp minor, B with the D sharp bass, and then E. And now I'd like to present an alternative fingering for the A with the C sharp bass. This is a very useful fingering. Sounds like this. And now if I move that shape up two frets, it will give us an alternative way of playing the B with the D sharp bass. And once again, depending on the song, that B with the D-sharp bass could resolve to an E chord like this one on the screen. That's an E major chord that contains a G-sharp in it, so it is truly an E major chord. Or I could go to an E major without the third. So once again, we have a lot of new sounds to listen for, and I'd like to close this session out with a little bit of an ear training project. I would recommend that you hear some of these chord progressions in action, in songs. I would recommend that you have a listen to a song called How to Make Gravy by Paul Kelly, and that song features a bar of E, a bar of F sharp minor, a bar of G sharp minor, and then a bar of F sharp minor as the opening chords in the song and each one of those chords have the drone strings on top so it's E major F sharp minor G sharp minor F sharp minor
Next, I recommend you have a listen to a song called Sweet Melissa by the Allman Brothers. This features the exact same chord progression as How to Make Gravy. And I'm only talking about the introductions, the first sounds that you're hearing in a song and seeing if you can hear them in a song. And just before we finish this session, I'd like you to have a listen to one more song. This time, it's a song called Something in the Air by Thunderclap Newman. This song starts out in the introduction with one bar of E, one bar of F sharp minor, then one bar of E, one bar of F sharp minor. Then once the vocals start, the chord progression moves to two bars of E, then two bars of F sharp minor. And so I hope that gives you a few things to think about and to listen for, and I look forward to catching up with you on the next session. Bye for now.